Kentucky, the college basketball season begins tonight. And it's an in-state battle with the toppers of WKU facing Kentucky Wesleyan. I'm Joe Fisher, great to be with you, joined by Tyler Hansbro as we are the North Carolina great joining me here as the lights are down, starting lineup for WKU being introduced for this opening game. We're gonna see some talent tonight. We're gonna see some big talent, starting with the Kentucky Wesleyan team, Tyler, that surprised the college basketball world, though it was just an exhibition game. They go to Louisville and win. That got everybody's attention. It was a big shot. Uh, they are a blue collar team, smart, a team made up of veterans, older players, so they did the right things, they executed down the stretch. But for me, when I look at K Kentucky Wesleyan, the player that stands out is BZ Fernandez, fifth year player, transferred from Montana State, played in the NCAA tournament last year. He's gonna be key, he can spread the court, he's a Euro player, he can do a lot of different things. I'm looking up for this matchup between him and Rodney Howard, I think it's going to be a great, uh, big man battle tonight. Let's talk about that. Rodney Howard, number zero, is going to get the start. Transfer from Georgia Tech. Steve Lutz in his first season as the head coach for WKU. A lot of new faces on uh -huh. this team, too. Well, I think it's going to be kind of a finding out period, uh, especially for uh, WKU. Uh, they have a lot of transfers coming in. But Rodney Howard, I think he has a lot of size. I think he has the ability to control the paint. Uh, but also when I look at WKU, I think another player, you talk about Dante Allen, who is a volume shooter, can get hot. He has developed into more of a player progressing, uh, evolving, and starting to get more active defensively. So he's a player that can get hot and really make a big difference for this game. Uh, so those are two players that I'm going to watch out for tonight. Boy, a lot of new faces on both of these teams. It'll be interesting to see because they have to learn playing with each other other than practice. Our officials for tonight, Andrew Walton, John Garrett, Joey Richardson, tosses into the air. WKU wearing the white jerseys and pants with red numerals and trim, and they control the tap as they move left to right here in this opening first half. They try to force it down inside to Howard. It's knocked out of bounds. It will be off Howard, so it's the Panthers basketball. Try to go into Howard immediately down low in the post. Uh, I like to see that as a big man. So we'll see what they do. A lot of screens, a lot of action. Look like they're uh, in some motion style to get. Kennedy Miles brings it up, hands it off as they work it on the wing. Back to Miles for a three that's too strong. Rebound tapped out deep, saved by WKU. They want to push it, drive into the basket. Marshall banks it in and one. That was just a, a great run from him. Get an easy rebound, take off. You get the highest percentage shot in basketball, which is a layup, and now he's going to shoot the second highest percentage shot in basketball, which is a free throw. So that's always a good combination. Tyro Marshall, a local product, played at Pearl Cone High School just down I-65 in Nashville, and his free throw was good, and it's 3-0 early on WKU. Just a little bit of token pressure in the backcourt. Brought up by Miles, hands it off on the weave. Man-to-man -man defense here for WKU. They stretch it to the top, back to Miles. Will they hedge and double team there? That's kind of ancient. Today, you see a lot of switching in basketball, uh, but I like to see them put a lot of pressure. It looks like they got, an got another steal, and they're off for another easy layup. And McHenry with a layup. They had the big man for Kentucky Wesley trying to dribble, just pounding it on the deck too much, and it's got his pocket picks. It's tough, especially when you apply pressure like this. A lot of teams don't do this now in college, but I'm a guy, I love to make the, the offense make mistakes, get out, pressure them, hedge. I love the hedge and get back for the big, but they just gave up a three. It makes you vulnerable there because you put your players into defensive rotations. Sometimes you can lead uh, to an easy three, which uh, Wesley, just, Wesley just got. And that's Fernandez with the three. He had 22 in their exhibition loss to St. Louis. Penetration shot put up and a foul. Is called as Brandon Newman, the 6'5 senior, penetrates. And the foul was called. And that is on Edward Jones. That's his first and the team's second. Looks like uh, WKU is going inside and trying to get to the basket more than you see a lot of teams now, which is a kind of relief for me because a lot <laughs> of teams settle and shoot the, the three. But I like to see a team go inside and try to get some layups. Newman misses the first free throw. He is a preseason all-conference USA selection. Transfer from Purdue. 
Purdue had quite the year last year. Their best team in college basketball for the majority of the time. season. Yep. So he was a good transfer uh, for Six, WKU. 6-3 WKU after Newman made one out of two. Bounce pass, nice backdoor cut, then the kick to the wing. Shot fake penetration on the baseline jump were good. That was nice offense, and that was Logan McIntyre with the basket. His first point, 6-5, toppers. Callum Bay to the wing. Skip pass to McHenry. Looks down low. There's Howard, turn around, too strong. Rebound, Kentucky Wesleyan. Good look, just couldn't finish. You got good position deep low where you don't have to make a move. You can go right up. All the way to the good. basket. Nice reverse, couldn't finish there on the other side. WKU wants to run. Four on three. Nice lead past Callum Bay with a jam. That was an unbelievable, unbelievable running of the court from Callum Bay to get the nice, easy dunk. Uh, I tell you what, WKU is running. Uh, it, it looks like this could be what Lutz wants to, to do is become a running team, apply pressure, and then get off to the races and get layups and dunks. Let's talk about that. It's Steve Lutz, first year head coach here, coming from a couple of really successful years at Texas A&M Corpus Christi, got to the tournament, won a game uh, in the first four in the NCAA. And you talked about it coming in. He wants to kind of see what kind of talent he has and mold them to what they can do best. Listening to him talk, uh, he is not a system coach where he doesn't really have an identity. identity. What he tries to do is see who he has on the team and what they can do and then try to, uh, you know, make that their identity. And it looks like they have a lot of athletic guys that like to run the court. And it looks like they're going to be a running team uh, just from the beginning of this game. Penetration ball tipped and saved by Wesleyan in the corner. They need some help. Well, Western trying to double team. Ball gets loose, and that's going to be whistled off, and that's a travel. Boy, they slap the double team down, Tyler, in that corner. That's a tough place to have the basketball. That's a great place to have a trap uh, because you really have – you limit uh, where you can throw the ball because you're out of bounds right there, close, which he just got that turnover uh, down low. That's a good trap from uh, WKU. A couple of new players on for the toppers. Number five, Babacar Fay, a 6'8 junior from Senegal. And Jack Elan, a 5'10 freshman from nearby Louisville. Bounce pass to the baseline. Faye spins, tries to power his way in, turned it over. Tried to do it a little too much. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't get that deep seal position. You have to put it on the floor, makes you vulnerable. Uh, just lost it. If you get deep enough, you can catch the ball and go right up. You don't have to make a move or put it on yeah. the floor. Traveling violation there as he shuffled the pivot foot. Unforced error by McIntyre for the Panthers. Seen a lot of turnovers. I think that's calls from uh, WKU's pressure that they're putting. Uh, you know, maybe Westland hasn't seen that type of pressure. Uh, they've had a couple quick turnovers, or it could be the start of the season. Guys just having a little bit of nerves. Uh, you never really know. We'll see how this game kind of settles to see if that uh, continues to be a problem for Westland. Kavion Mitchell checks in for the Panthers, a 6'3 senior from Irvington, Kentucky. Also into the game, number three, Farez Ramouche, a 6'10 senior from Algeria. So both coaches making some early substitutions here in this opening contest. Newman pulls the trigger from 17, couldn't finish. Rebound, Fernandez. Front court, number 21, Mitchell. Hands off to Jones. Jones out of New Orleans, needs some help. Well, Western really extending the defense out on the perimeter. Fernandez, he likes to shoot from outside. He's already got a three tonight. Reach in foul as Marshall thought he had the strip from behind, but he's called for the contact. That's his first. Wesley needs to find a way to get Fernandez involved uh, early, kind of get into the flow of the game so we can get a rhythm. That's going to be a key for them uh, to kind of give WKU a run tonight. Uh, they got to see if he can get some easy buckets, get his confidence going, and then I think they'll kind of ease into the game. Lester goes a little smaller here as Christian Lander, 6'3", senior, checks in. Bounce pass on the back door, cut it, got through somehow, layup good, and a foul. Boy, it looked like there was traffic there, title, but it got through somehow, and the basket is good. Well, it's that pressure. Uh, they were trying to take away the passing lane, denying the passing lane, which makes you vulnerable to the back door. Uh, obviously, uh, that's on actually putting ball pressure on the ball to not allow the backdoor pass. But once he got inside, he made a heck of a nice layup through contact. Uh, very impressive. Smart play. Alex Gray, the senior from 
Owensboro, which is where Kentucky Wesleyan is located, misses the free throw, favor the rebound for WKU. Eight, seven toppers. Just inside 16 minutes left, three is too strong. Offensive board, put back, missed. Rebound, Kentucky Wesleyan. Now Dante Allen, he's a volume three-point shooter, so he's gonna fire him up and try to get into a rhythm, see if he can't get hot. Mitchell lobs it to the top to Ramouche, has it stripped away, another turnover. Fay on the drive to the basket, he is fouled. That was a great strip by Fay. Put ball pressure on there, the big man was looking around, got lackadaisical, and just stripped it, and got a layup. Got, got to the foul line. Foul on Alex Gray, his first. We'll have free throws after this timeout. 15-33 left in the opening half from Bowling Green. It's WKU 8, Kentucky Wesleyan 7. From Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, Joe Fisher, Tyler Hansbro with you. WKU 8 and Kentucky Wesleyan 7. Yeah, this is just a nice, nice push from WKU. Great run from Callum Bay uh, to get the dunk. And that's what he's known for. He's an athletic guard that's going to get out and run the court. So you'll see more of that uh, throughout the year. Uh, and obviously that's a great shot in basketball. Anytime you get an uncontested layup slash dunk. High percentage. Uh -huh. Third team Juco All-American was Callum Bay. He's out of Quebec. He played on the under-19 Canadian national team, as a matter of fact. So we'll have a free throw coming up after this break. He came from Indian Hills mm -hmm. Junior College, community, community College, which I grew up watching uh, Juco basketball. Very good program. And uh, a lot of Juco basketball is a little bit underrated. Very competitive. Walk us through, you went through this opening game thing for a number of years when you were playing for the Tar Heels. I don't care how good you are or how much you've played. First game is always a little bit different, isn't it? It is different. You have a little nerves. Uh, you're also excited. Uh, you've been practicing, going through the, you know, it's tough practices are always at the beginning. They ruled it an intentional foul a moment ago, so Faye is going to get two free throws, and then WKU will get the basketball. I didn't see the intentional on there, but I, I definitely believe him in today's game. I mean, it was clear when the foul, he wasn't going to let him get the shot away is what, what he did, but they ruled it intentional. Faye so, makes the first free throw. I would agree with the call. Transfer from College of Charleston. College of Charleston had a big time year last year. Uh, went on a big running streak. Faye was a big part, big athletic, can get, it, get, it, can get out and run, as you just saw. Makes both free throws. So now WKU will get the basketball. Leading 10 to 7, Toppers. This one counts in the regular season for WKU. This one doesn't count for Kentucky Wesleyan. This is basically an exhibition for them. Allen, back to Edelin. Working the perimeter, Kentucky Wesley and extending that defense, trying to get out there on the arc. They pound it down to Fay, through the double team, stripped and stolen away. Looks like Wesleyan just collapsed defensively, tripled the post. Fay's got to pass that one out, then repost, get a better shot. Three from the left wing, in and out, no good. Rebound WKU. Coming down with that is Christian Lander. WK really trying to push it. Three, too strong. Offensive board, Faye put back. Great rebound from Faye. Uh, long shots equal long rebound, but that was just a nice soft, soft miss. Uh, and uh, obviously went back up. Could have been an and one. WK, and a, another, another turnover by the Panthers. McHenry penetrates, can't finish. Faye can't finish on the follow. Tries again, got the roll. Faye getting it done. That's going to prompt a timeout, I believe. Faye is playing. Drew Cooper. Faye is playing with great energy. Those offensive rebounds, that's a lot of tough work. Uh, Faye might have an injury right now going back, uh, looks like, to the locker room. Yep. Yeah, he is. He's heading back to the locker room. That's uh, significant because he was a real factor here the last couple of minutes. 14-37 like left in this opening half. WKU has opened up a touchdown lead at 14-7. to 
Yeah, you never really know what you're going to get. This is such a new team for WKU. Uh, that Faye is playing unbelievable. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes you, you go through practice, and then all of a sudden when the games happen, you see players play that you're like, man, who is this guy? <laughs> and I tell you what, Faye's, Faye's going to be big for, for WKU if he continues to play like that. Dom Sabota, the freshman from Sydney, Australia, in for Kentucky Wesley, and he brought it up the court. In desperate need, there's the backdoor cut again, but this time it's stripped away, and WKU pushing it again. McHenry kicks it to Edlin, drives up and under, and turns it over. Got up under, had nowhere to go with it, and turned it over. Penetration in the kick to the wing. Fernandez passed up the three at the top, passed it up again. He's got one already here in this game. 14-7, WKU with the lead, 14 minutes left in the half. Penetration to the corner. Jumper from 16 is good for Kennedy Miles. That's a tough shot. Contested long two. Uh, I think Wesleyan's going to have to get better shots of that to really compete. 14-9, toppers lead. Allen with the handoff. One-hander in the lane is good by McHenry. That's a tough finish right there through contact. Another Juco All-American. He's got four. Junior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 16-9 WKU. Subs ready to come in for the toppers at the next dead ball. Fernandez has it stripped away, almost stolen. Loose ball, got it back. Good hustle there by Lander, but he threw it back into the Wesleyan player. Shot clock at six, and a foul is called on the sideline. That's frustrating for Steve Lutz because they had really good defense. But Dante Allen has whistled for the foul. I thought that was Faye coming back in, and uh, I was about to say Lutz didn't spend much time with him on the bench, but uh, I would like to see him back in the game. But, you know, I think this is a figuring out period, uh, especially for WKU, and you're still trying to see what their, you know, what their gonna, style's going to be this year and who's going to be, uh, you know, take on the roles that they have for the team. But it looks like they're going to be a running team. I can guarantee you that. Looks like they really want to push it. Shot clock at 20 as they reset. Bounce pass to the high post. On the wing, now handing it off to Gray. Gray with a bounce pass and a reach-in foul is going to be called on Lander. Well, Western trying to jump every passing lane, and that one get a little contact. Yeah, you, what you want to do is be behind the, uh, the offensive player coming through that screen. It looked like he just tried to split the, the screen in the big and just ran into uh, the player and got a foul. 15 on the shot clock. Bounce pass with the cut underneath. Gray double team gets it back outside to Miles. Shot clock at nine. Fernandez sets a screen. They jump that on the double team. Nice pass inside. A little one-hander of the lane is short. Rebound WKU. Lander front court. Penetrates, drives, scoop, scores. That was a great push from WKU. Lander kind of. Uh, navigated his way into an easy layup right there. That was a very smart play from him. Transfer from Indiana. First points for Lander. Almost stolen away again. Gray kicks it cross court. Passed up the three. Back out to Fernandez between the circles. Now they get it back to Miles. Shot clock at 10. Western leading 18 to 9. Long three by Miles is off the iron, no good. Lander runs it down in the corner for WKU. Toppers want to run again. Callum Bay. Contested three is too strong. Rebound Panthers. That's a pretty optimistic shot. <laughs> uh, a long three early in shot clock like that. Uh, not a lot of touches. But Wesson's got to find a way to get easier buckets. Uh, I, I know the scores, you know, it's. It's still a tight ball game, but they need to get some easy baskets, so they're going to find themselves in a big hole. Fernandez swings it to Miles. Back out on the perimeter. There's Fernandez. He'll try another three. This is in and out. No good. Rebound WKU. 11.20 to go in the opening half. Little one-hander by Howard is short. Callum Bay with the offensive board taken away. I think Wesley wants to slow it down a little bit. I think they both want to slow it down right now. <laughs> they look like they're a little bit winded. Uh, WKU's got some subs at the scores table as well. Uh, so some guys are a little bit winded. We got a media timeout at the next dead ball. Quick touch pass for a three that is in and out. No good. Callum Bay with a rebound. That was a contested three as well. 
they need to find a way to get some easy layups to really get into the uh, flow uh, in this game. Offensive foul. Down low, there's the offensive foul called on WKU. Trying to work for position, it worked a little bit too much contact. So the foul is called on Rodney Howard. 10.45 left, Western leading 18-9. WKU 18, Kentucky Wesleyan 9, 10.45 left in the opening half from Dental Arena and Bowling Green. Well, there have been some big games in this building over the years. You can look inside WKU. There's the foul, as you can see that elbow thrown around. You know, Howard is a big, strong player, and I said he can control the paint before the game. Sometimes your size can work against you, uh, especially when you're playing against a smaller opponent. I've been there. You catch a... You know, catch somebody with an elbow, it's an easy call, and you just kind of get frustrated and go back down the court. Is it harder for a big guy like you to have a smaller guy guarding you than a guy that's your size? Absolutely not. You always want the smaller uh, defender on you. It gives you such an advantage to go right up and score. But Even you know, though they get up under you from time to time. Well, sometimes they can exaggerate the foul as well. Uh, I'm not sure uh, Fernandez you know, hits the floor like that every time he's bumped, but, you know, it was an offensive foul. Almost a travel there for the Panthers. Shot clock at 13. Well, Western continues to extend that defense all the way out on the perimeter. Long range three, way off the mark. Offensive board, put back, blocked! Rejected out of bounds. Wow, that was Falou John, the 6'11 junior from Senegal. What a rejection. That was a big time block, especially when Westland needs to get an easy bucket. They thought they had it. He comes out of nowhere and just shuts it down. 18 on the shot clock. And the three off the inbounds is too strong. Rebound WKU. Another contested three. That, that's really, that's a tough shot. The freshman Edelin drives down, kicks it down low. There's the double team for a moment. John is fouled as he went up for that one-hander on the baseline, and he's fouled by Rockish. Alexa Rockich, his first. That was an easy call. Uh, there we go, right there. Wesson got an uh, offensive rebound. John comes out of nowhere, blocks it, doesn't get up an easy layup. That's a great effort play, but also down low is an easy call. The defender slid under him. Great move, one dribble, try to go back to that right-hander. See the big brace on his right knee. He had a torn ACL for the 21-22 season. Makes the first free throw. He's got some range, too. He made 17 three-pointers last year. He's a transfer from Northwest Florida State College. He makes both free throws. Good touch. It, it's always nice to have that skill set. Sometimes now, and especially in today's game, is a lot of people like to take the big man and try to get them to develop a three. I think it should go in steps. If they can't shoot, th can't shoot their free throws right, make their layups, have good post moves, I'm not sure I want the big men always shooting the threes. And th I can't stress that enough. I, th I see too many young players focusing too much on the three-point shot. Bounce pass on the baseline. Well, they have an open three up here at the top, but instead pounding it on the deck, trying to work in and threw it away and then lost out of bounds. Still, that's great pressure defensively yep. from WKU. Almost just got another easy turnover. Uh, Would have started the break for them to continue to get easy buckets. wesleyan has got to figure it out how they can get an easy bucket. That's Tegan Moore, the 6'5 freshman out of Dry Ridge, Kentucky. He could not quite hang on to that pass. Panthers inbound, nine on the shot clock. Miles around the screen, cross-court pass. Passed up the three. Shot clock at one, they didn't get away. Lost track of the shot clock and turned it over. That is great pressure and great defense uh, from WKU to get a shot clock violation. Uh, Wesson didn't have anything easy, didn't even have a shot attempt that looked like right there. That was great defense. Boy, frustrating for Drew Cooper in his fifth year as the head coach at Kentucky Wesleyan and Steve Lutz in his first year as the head coach for Western Kentucky. Lutz is also going deep with his bench. Mm -hmm. uh, when you run like this, you're going to have to have some depth on your bench. Looks like he's using a lot of players, trying to figure out what he has, uh, which is going to happen when you're, uh, you're a running team. Illegal. Offensive foul on a legal screen. He just moved on the screen, got a little anxious, tried to hit the defender, which I respect because, you know, a lot of uh, 
nowadays not a lot of big men set the screen or actually make contract contact. Uh, that's why the screen was designed. But uh, it's good to see him try to you know get physical and set a screen, get the ball handler open because it's just gonna in the end it's gonna get him open as well. Called on Juwan, his first team's sixth of the half. Just inside. Almost nine minutes left to play in this opening half. Pass thrown away. Nice save down on the baseline. Shot rejected again out of bounds. Well, there's nothing easy in the paint against WKU. No, this might be a defensive team. We talked about them running, but it looks like their defensive pressure is really good tonight. They're also, the rotations are on point. That came from a rotation, uh, you know, getting a hand deflection on that pass. You can't emphasize enough how big of an impact deflections, getting your hands on balls can have in the game. Shot clock at nine on the inbound. Penetration by Miles. His runner is short, loose ball, and a late foul is called. On contact, I believe, on that shot. And I believe that foul is going to be on John, and that's his second. Man, he tried to block that. That was almost an impressive uh, block. Two-handed. Kennedy Miles, transfer out of Lawson State Community College. First free throw is good. He's got three. This is the easy buckets I was talking about, though. Wesley could get to the game now. They make some free throws, get their confidence. And, that, you know, that's what they did in Louisville, to be honest with you. They made their free throws, made the smart plays. For as bad as I think they played, they're only down 10 points right now, which is very impressive. Yeah, and that, nine. in that win against Louisville in exhibition, they went 31 for 38 at the free throw line. Makes a huge difference. 20-11, WKU with the lead, 845 left in this opening half. Looks like zone defense here for the first time. Three is no good. Rebound taken down by Wesleyan. First look at a zone from the Panthers. It looks like they're trying to mix it up, uh, slow them down a little bit, pass the ball around, shoot outside shots. WKU really jump in those passing lanes again. Nice three from the right wing by McIntyre. The transfer from Evansville with five. And Wesleyan within six. Loose ball picked up by Faye. He just finds himself always around the basketball. And a turnover on the inbounds by the Panthers. He just got out to the deny, the passing lane, denied the pass, got a deflection right back to WKU. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Wesleyan's getting some easy buckets now. They just hit that uh, three-pointer, which wasn't contested, moved the ball around. So they're keeping it close right now. Alex Gray checks back in for the Panthers as Edward Jones Jr. will sit down. 8-16 left in the half. Toppers inbound from their baseline, get it into Faye, who's had a really good first half. Good to see him back out there. He went to the locker room. Three off that screen by Edelin. No good. Follow jam. Another offensive rebound for Faye. Big time dunk. That is great for a big man. I tell you what, I like his game. He does the dirty work, uh, does the work early, puts himself into position to get the rebound. Easy bucket. He's got 10 already. They scramble for that loose ball. Bounce pass inside. Shot missed. And boy, everything contested in a foul called on WKU. Boy, there is nothing coming easy in the paint for Kentucky Wesleyan. No, you're starting to see the size difference in both teams, too. Uh, Foul is called, I believe, on Newman of WKU. 7.47 left in this first half, and the toppers lead by 10. Toppers by 10 in the first half in their season opener at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Joe Fisher along with North Carolina great Tyler Hansbro, and I tell you, it's, uh, I think this crowd, they're getting used to, Tyler, a lot of different names, a lot of transfers that have come from all over, but I think they've got to like what they've seen so far. They have to. There's been a lot of different players. They're using depth. Lutz is doing a great job. You're starting to see defensive pressure. WKU getting out and run, running, uh, kind of becoming their identity. It looks like pressure defensively and getting out and running. Devon Peterson, the junior from Orlando, gets his first points. He came through Lewis and Clark Community College. 24-15 toppers. Second one good. They're a good free throw shooting team. Hanging in there, 24-16. 7.45 left in this opening half from Bowling Green. You want to keep it close in the second half, see if you can make something happen. Your Wesleyan, and then you can get into it. Three left wing, no good. There's Faye again, but another offensive board lost it going up. 
Picked up by McHenry to Moore. Moore spots for a three. Too strong. Rebound for the Panthers. Bay's really active down low, especially in the offensive rebound rounds. And he's doing his work early. If you watch him, he's, set, he's putting himself into position before the shot goes up, really making it difficult for the Panthers. WKU tried to push it, turned it over that time. The pass was a little bit too short. And now Wesleyan with the ball. Bounce pass to Miles. Shot clock at 13, inside seven to go opening half. Toppers leading 24-16. Tough 14-footer is no good, rebound WKU. That's just a tough shot. They didn't really have much there. Uh, sometimes when you see that shot clock get late, you see team switch. But WKU stayed with the hedge, with the big get back. Lob to the baseline, contested shot. Good, nice finish by Peterson. Nice easy layup for Wesleyan. And within six once again, the Panthers. Down low to Fay. Steps through the double team, laid it up and in. Boy, he's been impressive. That was, that was a great seal from Fay. Uh, also, uh, when you get that seal early in the you know, transition, it doesn't allow the help side to be there. Oh, nice look inside for the pass, and I believe Steve Lutz has seen enough of that. He wants to get some subs in, but he doesn't want that wide open look down low as that basket was good. Yeah, there wasn't help side defense from either of those baskets right there. What I mean by that is when a guy gets beat, open for a wide open layup and they're putting pressure uh, you know, on the offensive player. Usually you have rotations defensively as an insurance policy near the rim and there was no protection right there. Uh, got both easy layups. It's what you want offensively. That's exactly what I'm talking about. He got out and run, ran. There was no help side defense there. Nice easy bucket. That's what Wesley needs to do to stay in this game. Keep it close, keep getting those easy buckets and to see if they can, you know, make a run in the second half, kind of like they did in Louisville. Mm -hmm. uh, really smart team. So if you let them hang around, uh, it could get interesting. Well, things got a little sloppy by the toppers in that last minute or so. They had a couple of turnovers trying. I, and I think, I wonder, Steve Lutz, he wants them to push the ball. And I guess sometimes you accept turnovers, but they had two or three in a row. When you're a running team, you're naturally going to have more turnovers. Uh, but... You know, it's a, it's a fine line. You don't want lackadaisical, unforced turnovers, which lead to easy buckets on the other end. Toppers after the timeout. Howard's been kind of quiet. We thought we might see more from him. We'll see how the game progresses. Yeah, I'd like to see him get better position down low. Land Live 40 left in this half. Yeah, they're starting to find their rhythm, getting some easy buckets, starting to look more confident, handling the pressure from WKU a little bit better. Ramouche, the big man outside, sets a screen, and a foul is going to be called. That might be a little bit of a bailout, to be honest, because I believe they're going to call a tripping foul. I'm not sure there was a trip there. I thought he just lost his balance trying to split the double team. I'm going to have to see a replay. I thought maybe it could have been a trip. So there's a... Hard heads from Howard. Let's see. He just stepped on his foot and lost his balance. I, I think Howard was moving. I think it was the right call. Stepped on his foot, then Howard moved. I'm not really sure. It could have gone either way. First free throw is good by Dom Sabota, freshman from Sydney, Australia. International lineups here for both these teams. You've got players for Kentucky Wesleyan from Algeria and Australia. To grow Serbia, sport. Spain. Hey, it's everywhere now. Yeah. Popular sport. I've played in China. I can tell you there's basketball's everywhere. Second free throw is good. They are a good free throw shooting team, getting it done at the line. And the Panthers within four again, 26-22. 5.20 left in the half. Lander, nice pass inside for the jam. That was great movement from WKU. Everyone was real active, moving without the ball, uh, which is not really talked about much in uh, today's basketball. But movement without the ball, putting yourself in good position to get layups, super important. Kentucky Wesleyan contending that that ball was tipped by Western Kentucky, and it was not to be. And that'll be a turnover on that penetration. Five minutes even left. Turnover's been a factor for both teams right now. 
uh, which you would ex you would expect the first game of the year. We'll see we'll see how it develops in the second half. See if teams kind of calm down. It looks like WKU is not as running as hard as they first were to start the game. I've heard coaches say, Tyler, it's one thing if you're going to turn it over, throw it into row five. Don't turn it over and give them a breakaway going the other way. That's that's a great point. Sometimes your best offense is your best defense. Uh, can definitely lead to easy buckets. Howard backs it in, misses the shot. Nice position there on the rebound by Ramush. And a chance to inch closer here for the Panthers. 4.35 left in the half. Miles draws the double team, threw it away, but it's fortunate for them that it goes off the hands of Allen out of bounds. That's a tough pass to make from one side of the court all the way to the other corner. That's going to be a turnover a lot of times. Shot clock at 13 for the Panthers. They'll inbound in a tough place there over near the corner. They get it in. McIntyre in the lane. He can't shoot. Got to get out of there, and he does. Shot clock at six. Three is no good. Long rebound stripped away by WKU, taken by Howard. Edel in front court. They want to run. Lander off balance draws contact and a foul. Smart play from Lander just to get out, run, get the easy bucket, uh, get to the free throw line. Not the easy bucket, but get to the free throw line, give your chance, give yourself a chance at some easy buckets. Boy, Drew Cooper not happy because that's basically a bailout. You had an offensive player that was off balance and a bit out of control, and the foul bails him out. In today's game, they talk a lot about going straight up. Then you can take some contact. The rest won't call it. Looked like he bumped him a little bit with his hip. It's going to get called every time. Lander, the transfer from Indiana with the uh, free throw. 29-22 WKU. Edelin comes out. He's played a lot as a true freshman. Second free throw is also good. Lead back to eight for the toppers, 30-22. Approaching four minutes left in this first half. Miles hooks a pass to the high post, gets the pass back on the wing. Well, they hedge way out, tried to force one inside. Again, off the hands of the toppers out of bounds. Trying to force that one to the baseline and fortunate to get it back. 3.58 left in this opening half. From Bowling Green, Kentucky, the toppers of WKU lead Kentucky Wesleyan 30-22. Just inside four minutes left in the opening half from Bowling Green, WKU leads Kentucky Wesleyan 30 to 22. You know, this, this is one of those, Tyler, that we saw. You, you look at the schedule and say, okay, you're, you're WK, you're gonna open with Wesleyan at home. Okay, you're gonna get a win out of the gate. This Wesleyan team is better than I think a lot of people gave them credit for. They showed that with that exhibition win over Louisville. They're hanging in there tonight. Well, there's multiple factors here. I think one thing is WKU is such a new team. They have a lot of new faces. But also, this Wesleyan team is made up of veteran players, seniors and juniors. They play smart. They're not going to beat themselves. Uh, so that's what you're seeing play out here right now. Miles with a teardrop in the lane. No good. Rebound Allen for WKU. They again want to run. They've tried to run at every opportunity tonight. Tough 17-footer, maybe partially blocked. Rebound Panthers coming the other way. Tough bounce pass, nice scoop by McIntyre. That's a tough one for a big guy to get when it comes up about ankle high. Yeah, that was a tough pass all the way across court. He was just trying to get him open for a, an easy layup. He was out running, didn't happen. McIntyre lost it, got it back. Shot clock at seven for the Panthers. Miles in the lane, strip stolen away. They let him play. Here come the toppers the other way after the turnover. Marshall, bounce pass inside to Howard. Gathers himself, lays it in with the left hand. Took his time, got the basket, saw the, the smaller defender, defender on him. Nice and easy layup for Howard. That might be a way to get him more active, get his confidence up, get him involved. Backdoor cut, now the quick passing. Nice passing by the Panthers. The three just a little strong. Offensive board put back by McIntyre. I tell you what, McIntyre's a smart player. Uh, he's not forcing much. Get the offensive rebound right there. Stay with it. Go back up. Get an easy bucket. But Howard right there, we just talked about, you know, getting his confidence. And both, both of those last two buckets from Howard, he got himself in great position, 
didn't have to put the ball on the floor, could go right up and score. Uh, that's a great deep seal from him, uh, both possessions. Lead back to 10, Fernandez with a pass to the wing, open three, good. Howard, nice give by there. Howard was really good offensively, but then he gambled on defense, got him out in rotation, and obviously Wesleyan took advantage of that for the nice open three. Tried to force it back into Howard again. He could not hang on. The turnover back to the Panthers. Loose ball in the corner. Approaching two minutes left in the half. WKU leading by seven. A lot of dribbling going on. A lot of hands reaching in for WKU. Fernandez comes loose, laid it up good. Fernandez starting to get involved a little bit more. Howard got out there, gambled again. Gave uh, Fernandez an easy open lane for a layup. I'll tell you what, Fernandez and Howard are starting to bang down low, starting to get a little physical. Keep an eye on that matchup. We talked about it before the game. McIntyre's three is no good. That would have cut it to two and a whistle, and I believe a timeout taken by WKU. I think Steve Lutz wants to get some other people into the game. They had a 10-point lead, a quick 5-0 run has cut it in half with 91 seconds left in the half. I would say they're getting a little tired, running hard. You can be nervous for, first, for the first game. Uh, you know, take a timeout, calm down, try to draw up a play, get a nice and easy bucket coming back, or see if you can't, you know, change it up defensively, get them into something different, and get a turnover, and put yourself in position to get a bucket running. This is a pretty key 91 seconds, isn't it, really for both these teams with the game sitting at five. If you're Kentucky Wesleyan and you can hang in, maybe cut it a little more, Panthers would have momentum going into the locker room. Yeah, Wesleyan's starting to you know, come back, get their confidence, they're getting easy buckets. They're starting to handle WKU's pressure a little bit better. And yeah, that's just a nice, nice rebound, offensive rebound for McIntyre. Then you see WKU, what they're doing is they're getting them in rotations where the defense is inside, then Wesleyan is just kicking it back out for the layup, but then right there you saw Fernandez, Howard gambled, then Fernandez got the easy layup. A little bit of a zone, a 1-2-2 zone trap for the Panthers. They will go into a zone defense here with 120 left in the half. Yeah, the Panthers are trying to slow them down, maybe take some pressure off them inside, phase back in. Newman spots for three, hits it. Brandon Newman, the transfer from Purdue, his first basket, four points on the night. And they needed that basket because it could have gone sideways if Wesleyan came back and got an easy layup. Just under a minute left in the half, 37-29, toppers with the lead. Long three by Miles, back iron no good. There's Faye again. Boy, he has been all over the basketball tonight. Elon wants to run. The freshman from Mayo High School in Louisville brings it back out. 35 seconds left in the half. Calabay threw it through the net outside for a three that's no good. Rebound Kentucky Wesleyan. They can play for the final shot of the half if they choose to do so. Shot clock is off. And I believe Drew Cooper is going to take a timeout and set up the final play. I would look for something as like a high... Uh, High ball screen, a big on guard. Try to penetrate, suck the defense in, then maybe kick it back out uh, to the three for a McIntyre three, or see if they can't get a nice and easy layup. Leading scorer in the half for Kentucky Wesleyan is Logan McIntyre, the sophomore, the transfer from Evansville with nine points. Leading scorer for the toppers is Babakar Fay with 12. Faye's been very active. Uh, he's, he's put himself in good position. He's gotten out and ran the floor. Uh, rim runs extremely hard. Uh, he's been active both defensively and offensively. He's really put himself in a lot, a lot of good position to get offensive rebounds where you can go right up and score. You saw him have the offensive yep. rebound, the putback dunk. Uh, but uh, he's very active tonight. But, you know, uh, Mac and, McIntyre for... You know, Wesleyan, he's just a smart player. He's not forcing anything. He's, he's taking what the defense is giving him, and uh, it's, it's paying off. He's handling the pressure from WKU uh, very good as if well. If you're the Panthers, when do you take the shot? I always go at eight seconds. It gives you a chance to get the offensive rebound, but also it eliminates WKU from going back down the court uh, and having time to run a play. 
They drive and kick to the corner and out of the wing with six left. The three is too strong. Offensive rebound with three. One more shot partially blocked. Follow is going to be good just ahead of the buzzer, and that one's going to count. That was a great offensive rebound also. That was a very impressive shot. Tough through contact. That was a big bucket for Wesleyan. So Jones with the follow and a basket for Kentucky Wesleyan to cut the deficit to six at intermission. We got a good one in Bowling Green at the break. The toppers of WKU 37 and Kentucky Wesleyan 31. Opening night for college basketball. We're in Bowling Green, Kentucky, D.A. Diddle Arena as the toppers of WKU lead Kentucky Wesleyan 37-31. Joe Fisher, Tyler Hansbro with you. Tyler, I understand you got a big pickleball thing coming up. Hey, I'm addicted to pickleball. It's, uh, it's the fastest growing sport in America and everyone laughs. I hate the name too. <laughs> but uh, you know, me and my family, we've enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. you got a big tournament coming up, I know, this yes. weekend. So. And Nationals in Dallas. We'll see how we do. Well, we've been practicing, put a lot of work into it. Hopefully it pays off. Well, both these teams have put a lot of work into the first half. And you look at the scoring, uh, WKU leading 37-31, led by Babacar Fay with 12 points. I think he's got six rebounds as well, our official stats. They're having some issues with that here. It's opening night, and those things happen. But... Uh, other than that, he was the leading scorer. Five points for Marshall, two for Callum Bay, four for Newman, four for Lander, four for McHenry, four for Howard, and two for John. Uh, for Kentucky Wesleyan, we saw in the highlight package earlier, uh, Logan McIntyre with nine points to lead them in scoring. Kennedy Miles uh, with seven. Five for Fernandez. That's a guy I think we thought we might see more offense from. And he made a three early on, Tyler. After that, they kept him pretty quiet. He started to find his rhythm a little bit late in the second half, especially when WKU, Howard in particular, started to gamble a little bit, took advantage of the pressure, found himself making easy, got an easy layup. Uh, maybe he can get his rhythm by doing that. But I especially uh, expect Fernandez uh, to be more active in the second half, to put Wesley in, in a good position uh, late in the game to try to get a win. But also for WKU, when I look at Faye, he's impacted the game more from his energy, the way he runs, than his stats have really shown right now. I'm going to be curious to see if they try to play him more extended minutes in the second half. We saw Howard down the stretch of the first half start to get more active, and they tried, it looked like, to force it into him. I'll be curious to see if that continues as well. Yeah, I think Howard's starting to find himself. He's putting himself in better position, closer to the rim, and I think that's key for him. He has the size. He can dominate the paint. It's all about putting himself in good position where he can get a deep seal and go straight up, where he doesn't have to put it on the floor, which would allow the defense to collapse on him and allows a smaller def defender to get a steal. Uh, so I'd expect him to get better positioning this half uh, and see if WKU can't have uh, another guy step up besides Faye, get out and run and get some easy buckets because they're really running. You know, unofficially, neither team really shot well from outside. You know, uh, it was Kentucky Wesleyan two for 14 from three, WKU one for 10, but the toppers you mentioned were really trying to push. They were trying to get up the court had some success in that running game. Definitely. Wesleyan really struggled early in the game with WKU's pressure. They took a lot of contested threes, and I think that's a result that you're seeing in the stats. But also, WKU, I think their identity is running and getting layups. I don't think they're going to be a team this year that's going to settle for threes like a lot of teams do nowadays. Uh, so expect them to get out and run. Uh, and maybe Dante Allen is a guy who can get hot from the outside, see if he can pr provide them with a spark in the second half to really extend the lead. Uh, because WKU KU needs a second guy to step up outside of Faye. Both teams good from the line uh, unofficially. Uh, six for seven was uh, Wesley and eight for nine uh, was WKU. So if this game comes down to it in the final minutes, free throws could really be key. And both teams seem to be pretty good in that category, rebounding unofficially 20 to 16 uh, in favor uh, of the toppers. Uh, so we'll see what the adjustments are. I, I would think Steve Lutz will continue to try to push the ball and see what Drew Cooper has drawn up for Wesleyan. Again, he's got to be pretty happy just down six at the break 
on the road here in Bowling Green, not that far on the road, just up the, <laughs> up the road from Owensboro for them. Yeah, I, I don't think you're going to see WKU slow down. But also, I will say that rebounding stat, that is surprising because you look at the size difference and it looks like WKU is the more athletic team. Wesley just playing smart, putting himself in good position uh, and, you know, doing their dirty work early to allow themselves to get their, the rebound, like boxing out and being in the good positions. Panthers inbound to open this second half right in front of us as they will start the weave on the perimeter. Western continues to stretch that defense out. They have really been aggressive in the man-to-man -man out on the perimeter. Hard hedges, you don't see that a lot now. They're really active in their rotations as well. Miles had an open look, tried to force it inside, and Rakic could not hang on. And An early turnover for the Panthers on their first possession. If he'd been able to hang on, that would have been a pretty easy basket inside. Instead, the toppers with a chance to extend their six-point advantage. Yeah, that comes from ball pressure. Sometimes when you have good ball pressure, uh, you know, it makes the offensive player make a bad pass, which you just saw right there, turnover. Marshall tried to drive. He was fouled by Alexa Rakic. I saw Drew Cooper over here again react because it's like Marshall was a little bit out of control, just throwing it up to the basket, and contact will bring the free throws. Yeah, he got behind him and kind of hip-checked him a little bit. That's going to get called pretty often. Even though his hands look like they're straight up, still hitting somebody with your, uh, your hip can cause a, have a big impact uh, on their shot. That's a foul every time. Marshall played at Pearl Cone High School in Nashville. He was a Mr. Basketball finalist in the state of Tennessee. He knocks down both free throws as both teams continue to shoot their freebies well. 39-31 toppers, just underway second half. Panthers front court, WKU has been man-to-man -man throughout this contest. As you can see how far out WKU has Wesleyan. You, you don't want to start your offense three or four feet behind the three-point line. Uh, it's really making everything difficult because then you can't make a pass inside or you can't get that backdoor pass, which you saw them have a few times in the first half. Inadvertent foul there. Callum Bay got the uh, feet tangled up and was called for the foul. His first. Fernandez in the corner. Drives, spins, nice double team help there from Howard. There's McIntyre once again, too strong. Rebound toppers again. They want to run three on two. McHenry dishes down inside, layup, no, but he was fouled. Ooh, it could have been an easy and one. That would have been a changer. But also, that was a smart play from Fernandez on the other end. He, he was triple teamed, kicked it back out. McIntyre just missed an easy three-point shot. Uh, they're going to need to do that more often. Uh, you know, he'll start making that once he gets his rhythm, once McIntyre gets his rhythm in the second half. Brandon Newman, who was – Misses the free throw. It's a rare miss tonight. Was familiar. Steve Lutz was an assistant at Purdue. And that's where Newman began. Transferred from Purdue to WKU. Gets the role on the second. Also, Lutz was uh, heavily involved. The first assistant coach to actually find Zach Eady, which is the reigning national player of the year for Purdue. Spent, I think, four years at Purdue with Matt Painter, who's a great coach. And then... Uh, yeah, so yeah, he got him a transfer from Purdue, which Purdue was great last year. Fernandez down on the baseline, trying to work closer, kicks it out to the wing. Miles stripped away and stolen quick hands by McHenry. He's on the run, and it's a breakaway and a layup good. Sometimes your best defense is your best offense. What you saw right there is WKU putting pressure on Wesleyan, forced a turnover, nice and easy layup on the other end. I believe, great. I believe this is the largest lead of the night for the toppers, 42-31, almost two minutes gone in this second half. Nice start out of the locker room for WKU. Fernandez contested shot too strong. Loose ball batted into the air, tip drill, and taken away, and now a reach-in foul is going to be called, I believe, on, I believe they're going to get the foul on number 30. That's Rockage, and he's saying, what did I do? I was just going for the basketball. Yeah, what you're starting to see is Fernandez get a little antsy, 
the, the defense is collapsing. They're really on top of him. He just had to pass outside the last few possessions. He's trying to find a way to get himself involved. You can start to see him get a little bit frustrated, which Fernandez is a key for Wesley. If they want to stay close in this game and make it, you know, a game in the second half, he's got to find himself a way to get involved in the game. Well, they force it down low and a nice, easy basket there for Calumbay. He's got four. Calumbay with a nice, easy seal down low. Just went right up for the layup. And that ball is going to be out off of the Panthers. And I think the toppers kind of smell blood in the water right now. It's a good timeout for Wesleyan. This is what they need. Regroup, a couple turnovers, see if they can't get an easy bucket, kind of calm down a little bit. So we'll take the timeout as well. A good start out of the locker room for the toppers. They extend their lead, their largest of the night. It's 44-31 WKU. A 7-0 run by WKU to open the second half, extend the lead to their largest of the night, 44-31. Joe Fisher, Tyler Hansbrough with you here from Diddle Arena. I think the key stat when you look at it is points in the paint. You talked about how they're pounding it inside. WKU, 30 to 14 advantage in the paint. Yeah, also WKU is getting out and running uh, and getting easy layups as well, which uh, is what you want. It looks like it's going to be this team's identity. Uh, and uh, neither team is really shooting well from the outside, especially the three. So you're going to see them go inside and try to find a way to make adjustments there. Almost a travel there for the toppers, but they hang on. Howard took turn around, comes up short. He bats it out, though, and it's saved for a three. That is no good. Rebound taken away by the Panthers. i tell you what, Howard was working hard to get that deep position down low. Uh, he's a physical player. McIntyre with a backdoor cut. Pass rejected inside. Shot blocked by Howard. Here comes WKU the other way. The layup by Newman is good, and he's fouled. There we go, this is what WKU is gonna do. You can see it, there's no secret to it. They're getting out and running, uh, especially after that great block from Howard on the other end, allows them to get out and transition and get a layup, and, and it's always a bonus whenever you get an and one. Foul on McIntyre, that's his first. So a 9-0 run now for the toppers, the big block by Howard. That was great block from Howard, put himself in the position. Didn't, just getting out and running, which WKU has been doing all night. And also, they've been connecting on their free throws, which is key as well. And Newman makes that one. He's got eight, four in this second half. Extending their largest lead, the toppers now 47-31. Critical time here for the Panthers to try to keep themselves in this. Wesleyan's got to find a way to get a bucket. And the backdoor cut just a little bit too far of a lead, and it goes out of bounds and another turnover, and that is number 14 on the Panthers tonight. I think what you're seeing is WKU putting a lot of pressure and forcing Wesleyan to start their offense way out past the three-point line, which makes every pass difficult. They break that zone press. Newman drives baseline, comes clean, lays it in. I'll tell you what, Newman's having a great start to the second half, really getting himself involved. Nice, easy buckets, all layups and connecting on his free throws as well. He's in double figures with 10. 12-0 run for the toppers to open this second half. 49-31 advantage. Panthers almost four minutes now without a point. Contested three is an air ball. That's a tough shot. Lead pass Callum Bay. Drives baseline, up and under good. I would, this is a good timeout from Wesleyan. They need a timeout. This just, one's getting away. WKU's just putting their head down, getting to the rim, getting layups. 14-0 run for the toppers out of the locker room. And with 15-54 left in this contest, the toppers have opened up a 20-point advantage. It's 51-31. This was a six-point game at halftime, but WKU has come out of the locker room and rattled off a 14-0 run, and the toppers have built the lead to 20 at 51-31. to Well, Wesleyan's really struggling with WKU's uh, pressure defensively, and they're getting a lot of turnovers, which are leading to a lot of transition layups for WKU, which WKU is getting out and running, especially Newman's coming out, coming out in the second half and got off to a great start. Uh, he's really set the tone uh, for WKU in the start of the second half. And also, Howard's made some big plays. He's big, physical, hasn't scored as much right now, but he's impacted the game. A big block uh, and doing a lot of banging down low. 
And a foul on Edelin as he was a little bit too aggressive in the backcourt. That's, that's gonna, his second. That's going to happen, but that's not a smart foul. You don't want to foul somebody that far away from the basket. But it happens when you apply pressure defensively. Toppers 5 for 7 from the field in the second half. Panthers are 0 for 4. And they're just having difficulty getting good, a good look offensively. Panthers are a little bit rattled right now. They need to settle down, try to find a way to get an easy bucket. They got Fernandez back in there, veteran player. See if he can't find his rhythm as well. But that, that's a tough shot. It went in. It's a good shot because it went in. But that is a tough contested shot. First points for Kavion Mitchell, the senior from Irvington, Kentucky. First points of the second half. They'll come take, about four and a half minutes into the half. They'll take it any way they can get it right now. They desperately need some buckets. Need some defense as well. Trailing by 18. Got a mismatch down low. And Howard finishes it. Smaller defender, great seal from Howard. Uh, like we talked about, you know, for him, he needs to get really good position, go straight up, which he did right there. Took his time, got a layup. He's got six on the night. Lead back to 20 for the toppers, 53-33. Fernandez surveys, goes out to McIntyre, who led them in scoring in the first half, scoops, and he'll get the bucket there. Starting to find a few buckets here and there. It was just a nice layup. It's still kind of a tough shot, it looked like. He was contested right there. Just can't afford to trade buckets trailing by 18 now. Needs some defensive stops to the Panthers. Newman penetrates, steps through, got a nice screen by Howard down low. That was good for Newman to take his time then put himself in good position right there uh, because he didn't really just jump at the chance to shoot a layup whenever he got inside the lane. Continued to dribble, then got the easy bucket there. But I, th I suspected Wesleyan might come out and change their defense to try to force WKU to shoot outside shots. Ooh, contested three is knocked down there by Mitchell. Starting to get their confidence. That was a tough shot. Went in, three-pointer, they needed it. 55-38, toppers lead at 17. Bob what. inside, there's Howard again posted up. They just don't have an answer for that. No, he's, he's starting to get his confidence. Him and Fernandez are banging, and I think that's taken away from Fernandez offensively because that's a – Howard's a low. That, that takes a lot to, to guard him, uh, especially with his size and strength. Nice drive by Dom Sabota there, the freshman from Australia. Howard's calling for the ball. And he wanted it, powered it up, missed that one, got the loose ball for a moment, but it's saved by the Panthers. Sometimes he needs to settle in, just take his time. He's so much bigger than these guys right here. No need to rush it. Toppers by 17. Panthers trying to chip away here with 13 minutes and change left. McIntyre drives right to left. Nice scoop and score. That was a tough shot. That was pretty impressive right there, too. That wasn't easy, but they needed it. Good, good savvy move from McIntyre as well. 13 for the transfer from Evansville, and I believe timeout's going to be taken here by WKU. They needed a timeout. They were starting to get some easy buckets, regroup, see what they can get, see if they can't draw up something, get a, a layup, or go back into Howard. Saw the head coach with a brief conversation with Howard there and a little encouragement. You, you talked about it earlier. Howard, at the end of the first half, sort of began to assert himself, and we saw him come out and do the same thing here to start this half. Definitely. You know, first game of the year, you get so excited. Sometimes you can overdo it. You have some nerves. You miss some easy shots. You probably make in practice or normal games. He's starting to find his rhythm as well. But also, it came from doing the small stuff defensively, getting some blocks, getting some rebounds. Then he became confident offensively and started demanding the ball putting himself in deep seal position to go right up, get some buckets. Uh, he's been actually a pretty big factor in the second half, and we talked about it before the game. We thought Howard would be an impact player, uh, a, an impact player for WKU this year. Started his career at Georgia. One year at Georgia, then three years at Georgia Tech before coming to Bowling Green. Yeah, that's a new thing now is these older players, you know, getting the fifth-year guy is uh, is so key for college basketball because they're smart. They're so much physically bigger and stronger than a lot of these, you know, freshmen coming in. You saw it last year, especially from San Diego State. Had a lot of veteran guys, fifth-year guys, just you know, dominant physically, uh, defensively, and, you know, went to the Final Four. Yeah. Foul called on Jones. That's his third. You know, it's interesting now with, with the COVID year, 
and players getting the opportunity to get the COVID year. A lot of the players that are listed on our rundown, you know, it used to be they're listed as junior, senior. Now they're listed fifth year because they don't really qualify as junior or senior. You know, there's a huge advantage like I just yeah. talked about. And I've always, you know, especially right now with this COVID, you got COVID year, you take advantage of it. It's almost like you value a fifth year guy if he's physically stronger and you know, knows the game of basketball better than a five-star freshman. I think you can use it to your advantage, especially if you get some of these guys from these big-time schools to kind of come down that really haven't had, you know, what they've wanted out of basketball uh, from those schools and try to get them in the portal. They could be an impact player, especially for WKU, which, uh, you know, they've got a lot of transfers, a lot of new faces. Shot contested and a late whistle and a foul as Jones is going to go to the line. Lutz has done a great job in the portal. Uh, he's a coach that was heavily recruiting the portal guys. Uh, they got a lot of new faces. He's done it at, you know, Texas A&M, Corp Corpus Christi, where he did it. He got a lot of transfers from, you know, to come in there. Had a big impact as well. well. Allen got called for the foul. The replay shows Allen got the worst of that. As a matter of fact, the free throw is good by Jones. Yes. I've talked to coaches, Tyler, that talk about now that, that recruiting has changed. They don't spend as much time recruiting high schools as they do spending time in the portal now. The portal's not the smoothest recruiting process currently. I think it's getting better, but you know, it's it is key. It's a huge deal. Getting these fifth year guys who, you know, their bodies have developed, they know the game, they know how to play offensively and defensively, it's huge. Well, there's Faye again with another board. Faye's just extremely active, plays with high energy. I love how active he is. He's trying to post up down low. Lander for three, no good. Long rebound, and it's going to be saved in the corner by the Panthers. Bay's one of those guys you just do not want to guard. Just high, he's going to wear you out. They work it down low. Bay defensively here. High dribble by Ramouche. Cross court pass is saved. That's a uh, tough pass. I don't know how that one got through. Three is an air ball. Offensive rebound. Shot clock at six. Did not reset. Long three is in and out. No good. Fay in there again with another board. It's a big rebound. Fay cleaned it up. Wesson can't find anything easy right now. I think that's his double double. That was his tenth rebound. Nice strip by Miles coming the other way for the Panthers. Cross court pass. Gray lets the traffic clear. Now leaves it for the trailer. Three is good by Mitchell. That's a big time bucket. He was open, it was a great shot. Oh, the lane cleared for McHenry, nobody cut him off. I would immediately call a timeout if I was Wesley. That was just, you know, you, you got an easy bucket, you got what you want on the other end. And then down here, WKU just goes right to the bucket, uncontested layup, that's tough. Boy, and Drew Cooper trying to find out what happened on that defensive play because nobody picked up the drive. 10.58 left, 61-46 toppers. 15-point advantage for WKU, 61-46, just under 11 minutes left in this contest. Key stat, one of them obviously points in the paint. Western 42-22 edge in that category. I'm curious, Tyler, they're, they're going to find out a lot about themselves after this game because road trips coming up to Wichita State and to Murray State. Yeah, definitely. You know, those are, those are tough road trips, but also uh, I think as fans, and we're starting to see lots of style, I think – you know, running's going to be crucial. Defensive pressure as well. That's our identity right now. Panthers with the ball and a offensive foul. Moving screen is going to be called on Kennedy Miles. Looked like Miles just didn't hold his position and tried to roll a little bit. Oh, yeah. He wasn't set. He was still moving when he ran into the defender. Good call. Easy. Toppers with the ball leading by 15. More for three. Good. Say one more. That is a confident shot. Come out, one pass, fire up a three, nothing but net. Moore is one of eight Kentucky high school players in history with 3,000 career points and 1,000 career rebounds. Start to mix in some freshmen, which is good. Get them active, get them some experience early on. Another air ball on the three-point shot. It's going to be off Moore out of bounds. Neither team has shot the ball particularly well from outside the arc. WKU two for 13, the Panthers five for 23. 
Yeah, I don't think WKU is going to be an outside shooting team. But although you just saw Moore knock down a, a pretty easy three, confidently as well, didn't hesitate at all. So maybe he could be that guy, find that role, be a knockdown three-point shooter, and pres you know, provide them with some outside shooting. Uh, but no, their, their idea is going to be running and getting layups. Freshman Edel in front court leaves it. Approaching the midway point of the second half. Moore with the entry pass. And a reach in foul, I believe, is going to be from behind on Fares Ramush. That is, I believe, seven team fouls and brings up the one and one. Man, getting to the bonus pretty early in yep. the second half. That's key for Webster. Exactly at the midway point, 10 minutes left. And the topper is 14 for 16 at the line. That one spins out no good. Down by 18, Panthers with the basketball. Looking for a late run here to get back in it. They're going to try it from three again. That one is good. The three by Jones. Wesley is going to have to start shooting more threes to try to find a way to get more points uh, as we get closer to the end of the game. They're going to have to get on some type of run. Also, uh, when they do get on these runs, they're not getting stops defensively, so they're really putting themselves in a position, and they can't go bucket for bucket like we talked about. They're going to have to get some stops defensively and get on a run. I think this is, even though we're 9.39 left, I think this is an offense for, for defense substitution. They put McIntyre back into the game as Gray sits down, trying to get that run that you're talking about here, Tyler, with 9.30 left. McIntyre's been one of their better players tonight uh, that hasn't really struggled, uh, but you know, they, need, they need somebody to get some bucket. Yeah, he was going to shoot, but he didn't catch that one cleanly, so he had to pass the ball and give it up. Shot Look, clock at seven. They're just so far out offensively. It's hard to do anything. Loose ball on the turnover and the jam. I would probably go a timeout maybe uh, to see what, you know, if they can do something different defensively especially, maybe start to press a little bit, but great pressure from WKU to allow them to get the, the dunk on the other end. McIntyre with walk. a step through and took maybe one step too many. Got a little happy feet on that one. It's all the layup. It happens. I've done it a lot. Yeah, when they cover ground from the free throw line to the basket, it's usually more than a step and a half, so. He started doing the uh, the tiptoe into yep. the for the layup there. A little odd footwork. Edel in the freshman front court. 8.48 left. And an offensive foul, I believe, on a moving screen. That's going to be called on Edelin. He's a freshman. He's played quite a bit tonight. Adam. Yeah, it's important to involve, you know, keep your freshmen involved because uh, it's hard to throw young players, uh, especially in the conference play late in the season if they've had no experience prior and expect them to be really, uh, you know, have a huge impact. So it's good, smart move from Lutz to get these guys some playing time right now so he can play them later on in the year when they really need them. And let's see what this is all about. I'm wondering if they want to take a look at this one. There was a whistle for action that was going on down under the basket. I wonder. I think that they're going to take a look and see if maybe if there was a contact, if an elbow got up to the head. I totally missed it. I didn't see it. I, I mean, I saw the whistle, and immediately the officials walked to the scorer's table and waved another official over, which means I believe they're going to take a look at this. This is down inside. I, I, I can't see that one. I don't know. It, it may be out of our shot there. I, I didn't see a thing. Let's take a look. Oh, there it oh, is. Oh, there at it the is. Top. Yep. Let's see here. Oh, well, I caught him about the chin there. Let's see. It looked like he was trying to box him out a little bit. Old school basketball, you used to put an elbow right in somebody's chest, then box out. That's not really what they teach nowadays. Uh, so. I don't know. This could go either way. I could see it being flagrant or just, you know, inadvertent contact. I think they're going to all discuss it here now. Andrew Walton, John Garrett, Joey Richardson, our officials tonight. And he got it right in the throat. I think that's going to be a flagrant one now that I get a better view of it. Anytime you have contact near the head, 
even if it's inadvertent, I think. And I tell you, being hit in the, right there in the windpipe, they'll, they'll knock your breath out as well. Uh, I could see this being a flagrant, flagrant one maybe. It didn't look like it was intentional. It just like he got looks like he got the hand up just a little bit too high. I think he was trying to get him in the chest, and he got up a little too high. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to box him out, but flagrant one usually not intended. And I believe that's what they have ruled. I believe they've called it a flagrant one. Yeah, so flagrant ones I don't think have to be intentional. Just any time there's contact near the head, especially now, uh, it's just going to automatically be a flagrant one. So Rackage will go to the line. He'll get two, and then the Panthers will get the ball back. So a chance to maybe start a little bit of a run here with 8.33 left to play. And first free throw is no good. Yeah, I think they need more than this. Uh, so they, they need something to, you know, happen for them to even make it a close game right now. But I would start to suspect maybe that Wesleyan goes into a full court mm -hmm. press. Try to mix it up, see if they can't get uh, WKU to make some turnovers and then allow them to get an easy bucket at the, other, at the other end. They have shown a zone press a couple of times tonight, but really not aggressively full court. Yeah, I would start trapping uh, maybe like a. Tried the backdoor cut. Nice play there to take it the other way by Marshall on the turnover. Back to Marshall, kicks it to Moore. There's the three for Moore. That's what he can do. I tell you what, if WKU wants to shoot outside shots, it's going to come from Moore. That's two shots that he's knocked down confidently, moved without the ball, put himself in good position, wide open, knocked down three for Moore. He's got eight all in this half. The lead back to 19, 69-50, and I believe, I believe he stepped on the sideline, lost track of where he was. That happens a lot more these days. You see players that are out there on the perimeter and take that step back to get themselves set and get themselves out of bounds. Especially in the corner. When they move the three-point line back in college, you'll see it all the time in the NBA. Uh, but it's just a, a small space back there. You'll see a lot of guys step back. Their heel will be outside when they catch the ball. But also, I think Moore is a guy who could, you know, he keeps knocking down these shots. He's going to, you know, build confidence in the coaching staff, and he's going to be, a, he's going to find a role uh, for WKU for being an outside shooter, which they need and they don't have. Uh, he could get more minutes as the season goes on if he keeps knocking these shots down. Nice athletic move by Callum Bay. Loose ball picked up by McIntyre. He's not slowing down. He keeps battling. He's got 15. Yeah, they're going to go down with a fight. Leslie's a veteran team, blue collar. They're going to work. 71-52, 7.25 left. Three back iron, no good. More feeling it a little bit, but an offensive rebound. Callum Bay tried to force it inside. Nice hands, and the layup is good by John. That was a heat check for Moore, yeah. uh, which every player loves. You know, he knocked down a couple shots easy. Then you have the green light just to fire it from almost half court, uh, which he did, which, <laughs> you know, as a freshman, that's a way not to really build confidence in the coaching staff. But, you know, he'll figure that out. Lead back to its largest of the night, 73-52 for the toppers. Inside seven minutes left, and a foul is going to be called on Juwan, and that'll be his third. And that'll take us to a timeout with 6.55 left to play. Toppers, after leading by six at the break, in command, leading by 21. Right. Toppers led by six at intermission. Started with a 14-0 run to open the second half. And haven't looked back. They lead by their largest margin now, 73-52. Joe Fisher along with North Carolina great Tyler Hansbro. When you look at some of these stats, some of these team stats are very telling. Yeah, definitely. It's hard to win a ball game when you don't have any fast break points. Wesleyan hasn't had a fast break point all night. But also, they've allowed WKU to shoot 70% from the floor in the second half. You're not going to beat anybody if you don't bring your defense. Uh, so it's hard to win that way. But you know, it's quite a hole right now. Penetration, contested shot, and a late whistle on a block. Yeah, that was a bit of a bell out. That's one of those, that I, and I've had the philosophy sometimes, I think, guys, if the if the shot goes in, they don't blow the whistle. But if it doesn't go in, then you get the foul call. Definitely. I. What I think, uh, you know, Allen should have stayed still right there. What he did, he's got caught moving a little bit. There was a little bit of contact. If he would have just gone straight up and not even moved to the side, maybe he gets away with that. 
Miles had seven points all in the first half. He knocks down the first free throw. So eight for Kennedy Miles. He had 10 in their exhibition win over Louisville. 73-53 WKU. And misses the second toss, but it's out of bounds. It's going to be tapped by the Panthers. It'll stay with the toppers now. And here comes some of that zone full court pressure. See if they try to trap out of it, try to force WKU to, into a turnover. But it looks like they're coming back into a zone, uh, you know, in the half court as well. And I'm not sure that's the pace you want to play at right now if you're trying to win. Yeah, WKU can afford to run some clock against this zone. I would expect more to move around a little bit, try to put them. Wow, well, three is up and no good, but there's the tap out and the save by Marshall. Then shot by Moore is banked up, and it's good, and a foul. That was a nice aggressive attack from Moore. I, actually, I really like Moore's game. I think he's put himself in position to score. I thought maybe with the zone, they'd work the ball around and find him uh, outside in the three-point uh, area to knock down another three-point shot. But, uh, you know, I think the takeaway from this game for me is Faye won, but also Moore. Mm -hmm. He coming off the bench in the second half, providing WKU with, you know, much-needed shooting. Uh, it's going to allow them to, you know, Draw the defense out, especially for Howard and Faye later on in the year if he can keep this confidence in shooting up. Yeah, Moore had a 31-point-per-game average as a high school senior. 75-53, largest lead of the night for the toppers. Approaching six minutes left to play. Gray. They're not allowing them to have any easy buckets, except for right that there. That one right there. As soon as I say it, what do you know? Uh, they need more of those, and they need them fast. That was the first one they've had in a long time. 75-55 Jones with the basket. Allen's going to jack up a three and knock it down. He finally got one to fall. He, like we talked about it before the game, he's a volume shooter. A lot of analysts had him, you know, being a, a big-time player for WKU this year, transferred from Kentucky, set out first five games here last year, uh, then starting to develop into more of a player than just a shooter. So I expect him to have a bigger role as the season goes on. Actually, he was one of my players I thought would have a big game tonight for WKU. You know, he was a Kentucky Mr. Basketball in 2019. He has the ability. Well, he's gotten plenty of scoring from his teammates, so they didn't really need his scoring tonight necessarily. Yeah, I don't think he sacrificed it for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but those were good minutes from Moore, though, who just checked out. Yep. Uh, freshman, that's a good start for him in his first game. Expect him to build on that. Uh, but also as a freshman, you, know, you come in here, this is your first time playing in college. You're a little bit nervous. He handled it well. Didn't play in the first half as well. Could a little bit a little emotional about that. But came out and proved himself in the second half. Those are good minutes for him. Allen tried to bank that one up a little bit too strong. Rebound to the Panthers. Yeah, Moore had 10 all in the second half. Approaching five minutes to play here in Bowling Green. 78-55, WKU in command. Bounce pass to Ramush at the top. There's that double team. Pass tapped out of bounds. Boy, nothing has come easy tonight for this Panthers offense. WKU has been really good at getting into the passing lanes. Yeah, they're pressuring them on all aspects. Uh, and I don't think Wesleyan really handled it all that well, because especially in the second half, you see it from their shooting percentage, but also they haven't started their offense even close to three-point line. West, WKU has forced them three or four feet behind the three-point line, which makes every pass difficult. It's not where you want to be. Right now, you see, that is not a good position to be. Shot clock at two, has to jack one up, it's rejected. Oh. Edelin coming the other way. Behind the back dribble, trying to save it, picked up by a teammate, and then he's tripped from behind. I believe that's going to be Gray who's going to be called for the foul. I tell you what, WKU has not slowed down either. <laughs> they are all gas, no brakes. Uh, it doesn't matter what time of the game or what the score is. I respect this, man. This, these are also important minutes, uh, especially for this team, because they're still trying to find, you know, what guys' roles are going to be. Here we go. You know, they forced Westland to have that offense three or four feet behind the three-point line. Easy turnover. Good block from WKU. Allows them on the other end to get out and transition, get fouled, get to the free throw line. And Newman rattles the first one home. He's got 13. He's had a good second half. Yeah, Newman's really settled in, got his confidence in the second half. Um, yeah, he's played well. Asking Juwan to tuck in the jersey there before they get started again. 
Second toss is also good, so 14 for Newman. Largest lead of the night for the toppers, 80-55, 4.35 left to play. Still picking up full court two, <laughs> which is, uh, that's tough. Hey, you're going to be exhausted. Uh, I can tell you from experience going full court, pressuring all night, that's tough basketball. Pick and screen and drive Charge. in, there's the offensive foul, yep. Good rotation, be right there, put your chest in front of them, nice, easy, take a charge, good defensive play. Good defensive rotation, just got right in front of the, took it right on the chest, old school basketball. He got away with a little shove right there, sold the contact, charge, great defense. Yeah, he may have been still moving a little bit, but he squared up. Yeah, the whole set thing to me is just a little exaggerated because if an offensive player is out of control and they still run you over right through the chest, I think it's an offensive foul. Lander with the three, he's got seven. This uh, Topper's team playing free and easy now with a big lead. 83-55 WKU, inside four minutes left. This was a 37-31 game at the half. This is what running will do. It'll make teams fatigue. You really don't see the benefit of, of running in the first half sometimes, but in the second half, you'll see teams wear down, start to make you know, easy mistakes, and you really capitalize on it, which WKU has done in the second half. That was a 20-footer that was shot about 23 feet. No good. Moore thought about it, but thought better of it. Lander's going to fire it anyway and knock it down. He's feeling it now. I'll tell you what, WKU is starting to get hot from the outside, which they hadn't been all night, but lately they got their confidence. Yeah, they were one for 10. I think they're five for their last 10 from three-point range. 86-55. <laughs> Pass on the baseline, nice catch and put up by Dom Subota. Three minutes left. I think Lander wants a heat check. Oh, he's going to take it if he gets it again. Oh. There he is. And there he goes. Ooh. And he banked that one up too strong. Got hit on the side of the face on that shot, too. I wanted him to shoot the three. I think he wanted to. <laughs> 240 left, cross court, spotting for a three. And that's good. Nice three by Gray. Going to be too little too late. That's a, that's a tough rotation, especially for Moore, who's uh, just come in. He's a freshman. That's a rotation. You have to be there for the, the baseline help from the other side, but also you have to put yourself in position to get back to your man on the other side of the court, uh, which uh, the corner three is an easy three, and it's a, a high percentage shot. But he just got caught too far on the other side of the baseline, allowed Wesleyan to get that corner three. I think both these teams are a little tired right now. We've been a long time between whistles here. Two minutes left to play. Contested turnaround is off the front iron. No good offensive board by Ramouche. He's going to spin and kick. That was Kobe S. His three is an air ball, and it's going to be knocked out of bounds. And that will go to the toppers. And that will lead us to the timeout with 1.52 left to play. And WKU... We, we are In not command. reviewing it. <laughs> I know they want it reviewed. We'll see. <laughs> no way. Kentucky Wesleyan was picked to finish eighth in the Great Midwest Athletic Conference this season. They hung with WKU for the first half, trailed by six. But the toppers came out of the locker room, rattled off 14-0 run, and have never looked back now, leading 86 to 60 with under two minutes left to play. WKU has dominated the second half, outscoring Wesleyan by 20 points in the second half. And we talked about it. I think this is what running and pressure, uh, in particular defensive, will do to a team. Start to make some, you know, careless mistakes. But also, WKU is just physically bigger and more athletic than Wesleyan. And, you know, starting to dominate them on both ends a little bit. Turnover on the inbounds there as Edelin got on the uh, sideline. Logan McIntyre, the leading scorer for the Panthers, the only player in double figures for them. He's got 15. 142 left to play. McIntyre with the basketball, passed up that three guarded by Moore. Now they go down low. Shot clock at three, got to get it up there, and Gray fires just before the shot clock expires. Rebound WKU. That's kind of been the story of the night. They haven't been able to get easy buckets. They forced Wesleyan to take tough shots all night. 
Jalen Dorsey, the 6'4 junior, in the game for WKU. And after the turnover, here they come the other way in the jam by Peterson. And they haven't had a fast break point all night, and I think they just ended that. I, that's what I said to you yep. during the break, because I just want Wesleyan to get a fast break point before the game's over, and they just got it. And check it in now and getting a hand. Tyler Olden, the 5'11 junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. Had him tied up on the sideline. <laughs> and we're going to have two free throws coming up here. That's a lot of pressure when they start cheering for you like that late in the game. So you've been sitting on the bench all night. It's hard to get into a rhythm. Well, you know, now everybody wants you to get a shot up. You know, that's that's the next thing. you got a 109 left to try to get a basket. you got to get a shot up. I mean, there's, there's no consequences. That's right. You know, you're not going to. I can play me next game. No, I didn't play this game. So <laughs> you got to get it up. Moore with the free throw. He's got 11 all in this half. Now Gavin Reed, a 6'3 freshman from Bloomington, Indiana, checks in as Drew Cooper's getting everybody up off the bench. Carter Bischoff, a six foot sophomore from Louisville, coming in. Dwayne Chapman, a 6'5 freshman from O'Fallon, Illinois. A lot of people think this isn't valuable time because it's a blowout game. But I think there's still value late in the game in situations like this, especially if you're a young kid like Moore. Really take advantage of trying to get your confidence, but also getting a feel for the game. New arena, new everything. I still like it when teams play hard. And I know there's like a, a lot of people kind of discourage that because it's such a blowout. I still like playing hard regardless. If there's time on the clock, I think you should still play hard. That's Kirkland with a three. That's no good. Offensive rebound. Kirkland's going to get another drive, and this one's going to be taken away. Dorsey coming the other way for WKU, two on two. He's going to go all the way to the rack, and it's contested, and he's fouled. Dorsey just put his head down, yeah. said, I got the ball. I'm going to go right to the rim, try to get a layup, just like everybody else has tonight. Uh, now he's going to the free throw line. <laughs> Foul on Gavin Reed, and that's going to send the junior from Berea, Kentucky, Jalen Dorsey who was a manager for this team back in the 21-22 season. Well, that's a different path than a lot of people take, mm -hmm. so I respect him. There you go. Trying to get in the scoring column, and he does. That's a 50-point half for WKU. In fact, a 52-point half. It's a lot of points. They're going to they're gonna be a high-scoring team the way, the way they like to get out and run. Uh, but if they can add some outside shooting, they're going to have a pretty good year. Dorsey makes them both. 90-62 toppers. Approaching half a minute to go. Kirkland works it around on the perimeter. Bounce pass to Jack Mahoney, a 6'10 freshman in there. Kirkland's going to drive. Tried to get a screen from Kirkland, and they're going to call a foul. Down inside. That's going to be called on Olden. I tell you what, Marble was really playing that passing lane up top. He really wanted to get a breakaway steal for a dunk right there. Uh, that uh, Big men love that. They love to take away that high-low pass right there at the top of the key, especially for the other big man. Put you out in transition, which isn't, you don't get that often as a big man. Kirkland makes the free throw, so he gets into the scoring column. 90-63, make it 90-64 as he hits them both. 16 seconds left. WKU, I think Steve Lutz says, just dribble it across the center line and let the clock run. Yeah, I'm not uh, a too big a fan of trying to take a shot or extend the lead right here. This is a classy move. Just hold it in the game. Tough first half for WKU, an impressive second half as they roll over Kentucky Wesleyan by a score of 90 to 64. So. The Toppers open their season 1 0. They got a couple of road games coming up on their schedule at Wichita State, at Murray State. But an impressive start. But we saw they really, and Steve Lutzen, you talked about it, Tyler. We weren't quite sure what kind of style they want to play. They want to get this ball up and down the floor. It's no secret. They want to run and they want to apply a ton of de defensive pressure to the other team to try to force them into turnovers, which allows WKU to go back on the other end and get those nice, easy layups like they got all night. It's no secret. Uh, this is going to be an interesting year for WKU. They're going to really be tested the next couple weeks. Ten WKU players getting the scoring column tonight, led by Brandon Newman with 14 and Tegan Moore with 12. 
Had a great time. Tyler enjoyed it. Great time. Thanks, Joe. Joe Fisher, great to have you with us. 90-64 WKU.